Hi, welcome to the second lecture in Module 1. This is about how your course is designed and um, so that you can work your way through the, uh, the course without worrying about a lot of the details. And I hope you stay to the end of this because a lot of this is going to be very helpful to you. We've already talked a little bit about modular design uh, for this course, uh, but in, in, in the first lecture, but we're gonna go in a little bit more detail this time. And we're gonna focus on the mastery learning, mastery testing proposition here. We're gonna concentrate really on the mastery testing. And what is mastery testing? Well, mastery testing is when you study, you take a quiz and you don't, do so well if you do well <laughs> great we're done you don't do so well you use the test to determine what it is that you didn't do so well and then you go back to your notes you go back to uh, some support work this is the mastery learning portion you learn or relearn the things you didn't know in order to take the quiz the first time and now you try it again. And here's the good news. You get three attempts on every quiz in this term. Um, but before you jump for joy, let's think about what that really means. So the first thing is to talk about, yes, it's designed in modules. The modules are gonna be completed in order now, by completion, I mean two things. When you complete a module, you must complete the quizzes. There are two ways to complete the quizzes. I've already mentioned there's three quizzes. If you score a 10 on the first or second quiz, then you're done. You don't have to take the second or third. As soon as you get a 10, you're done. That would represent part of the uh, completion. The other part of the completion is that you have to write me a learning assessment. It's required after every one of these quizzes, uh, except where there's a writing assignment, you have to do a learning assessment. So you need to send that, That's, that completes a module. So taking the quiz three times and writing me a learning assessment. When you take the quiz three times, the content opens up. What do I mean by that? If you're in module 2B, you take it three times, the content for module three immediately opens up. So if, if you take that third attempt at three o'clock in the afternoon, then as soon as you're done, you can begin studying for the next module. You're not, never limited to not see the next set of content unless you don't take all three or score a 10. If you score a 10, then the quiz for the next module opens up. If you do not score a 10 on the first modules anyway, then it's up to me to read your learning assessment and decide what to do. More on that. So mastery-based testing is that you want to try to score a perfect 10. You're limited to three attempts, and you must learn to review and study in between attempts. Like this, study, take quiz one, review and study the results of quiz one, uh, not only including just what you missed, but the ones you know in your heart you got lucky on, right? Okay, you didn't miss number three, but you didn't know it. You Go back and study that so that you're ready for it the next time it shows up. You're never getting the same question again twice. Okay, that's a lie. Um, the algorithm is set up that you can get the same question <laughs> twice, um, but it's unlikely. All right. Now, review and study, take quiz two, review and study, take quiz three. Your course is available 24-7. It's designed in modules. This is the screen from the first uh, lecture. If you want to freeze and take a look at this, fine, go ahead. Now, 
what's happening in each of the quiz base modules. Well, first off, it's learner centric. You're not going to find a lot of lectures in this, in this course, not where I am telling you what to think. It's not going to happen. You're in charge of your learning. Now, there are a lot of lectures in the supply and demand module and to be uh, and well in, in module three and maybe into module four but that's because there's so much technical going on I do walk you through supply and demand and how to calculate elasticities and and and, and what have you but you're not going to find a lecture for me in every single one of these modules you're going to find things to study including your text you're in charge of your learning, not me. So you're going to progress through without any intervention if you score high enough. So you're going to, in the yellow, you're going to read all this stuff, right? And is there another chapter? Then go back and read it. And if not, take the quiz, right? Now, microeconomics is the first part of our course. I got the bullets messed up there a little bit. Modules 2B, 3, and 4 you will require a score of 10 to auto advance to the next quiz. Uh, you score 10, next quiz, of course, the content opens up, but so does the next quiz. Modules 6 through 9, it requires a 9 to auto advance. Now, this is a convenience for you. It's not really an ideal thing to stop at a nine. If you get a nine on the first attempt, you still have two attempts to get a 10, and a 10 is going to be where you're going to get your best grade. Don't look at nine as the goal. Nine simply auto opens up the next. And when we get the macro, well, you've been doing this for nine modules plus the 7A writing assignment by that time, you kind of have this course down. I'm going to go ahead and open that quiz if you can score at least an eight. Again, eight's not the goal, but that will open up the next quiz for you automatically. Now, when you take these, you're striving to get a 10. That's the mastery process, right? With review and study in between, and these quizzes are all going to have a 15-minute time limit. Now, the time limit's not to put pressure on you or what have you. It's just these are open book tests, open note tests, and you can spend hours Googling and whatever. And, and that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to see can you solve these problems within a 15-minute time period. And that's why the limit is there. Now, how are questions generated for a 10 item quiz? Well, this is module three. Module three has 10 questions. Each question is associated with a learning objective. And that learning objective has attached to it a letter that is the level of difficulty. We'll talk about what those letters mean in, in, in another slide. But for example, you can look at number four and you can see Explain how demand and supply determine prices and quantities bought and sold. Okay, if you miss question four, that's what you restudy. That line right there, not just the question that you happen to get, because you're going to get a random question, which is based upon the learning assessment, which actually has a number 3.4. Numbers aren't important. But 3.4 would be the learning objective, uh, explain how in demand, supply, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and every question in that data bank is going to be a C-level difficulty. And again, I'll tell you what C means, means in a minute. But there could be 70 questions in there. It's about 5,000 questions in the database. So different questions are going to come up when you take your quizzes again. And they're going to be always the same graded level of difficulty and always on the same learning objective. So missing question six means you miss the learning objective and that's where you go and study. Now, how do you know where, what's, what these learning is, uh, objectives are? There's a menu item that says what is in each quiz. 
I advise you to look at that and um, all the quizzes are there. Every single learning assessment uh, objective is spelled out. Now, there's also another menu item that you will see in front of you at all times, which is how hard is each quiz? Questions are a mix of R's, which are recognition and recall, C's, which are conceptually complex questions, and A's, which are analytic questions. And you can see the number in module two, there are four recognition and recalls. What's a recognition and recall? It means it's probably straight out of the book or very close, right? It's, do you recognize that question? Do you recall the answer? Okay, complex question means that there's at least a concept that you have to have before you can solve this. You have to understand, I don't know, demand. You have to understand what demand is. And there's at least one step, if not maybe two sometimes, depending on how that question reads, but you're gonna to have to make a leap in order to figure that out. So a complex question is, uh, if price goes up, what happens to quantity demanded along a demand curve? You have to know that concept and there's one thing happening. Price is changing, there's an output. An analytic question might have two things going on and won't necessarily say, you know, price is going up, but we'll, you'll be told something that you need to know that that means demand is moving in a certain direction or supply is moving in a, a little bit higher level of learning. So if you look at the level of difficulty, modules three and four rank right up there, don't they? Um, it's supply and demand. That's the analytics of supply and demand that you're staring at right there. So don't underestimate the beginning problems of this course. Everything else gets easier if you can do well on three and four, guaranteed. Now, why is number seven also so tough? Well, that's theory of the firm and it deals with cost structures. And every student I've ever had has a problem with cost structures. It's just, it's a little bit different of a way of thinking and toughness. Okay. now. Don't take the questions back to back. If you do, you're playing the lottery. You're assuming that I can take a test, get a score, take a test again, get a score, take a test again, get a score, and you will get the highest score out of those three. But guess what? If these questions are fair and balanced, you're going to get the same score every single time. There's no learning by just taking the quiz. So how do you read something like this. Well, you might get this report back from me that said, hey, you know, on January 19th, 2015, you can see how long I've had this around, but I do these kind of reports for students all the time. You miss questions two, six, and 10. And then when, without any break at all, you took it again, you missed four, six, and 10. And then with only three minutes in between, you, you missed six, eight, and 10. So what does this mean? You missed question six and 10 all three times because why? You didn't know those two learning objectives and just taking the quiz again, playing the lottery again, doesn't make you a winner, okay? Don't take test back to back. It's not in your benefit at all. Now, study by reviewing your test and study and what will happen is we should see a pattern that test three score is higher than test two and test two score is higher than test one that maximizes your grade but i don't care about grades I'll tell you right now i care about your learning you learn more and that's what that is so important so Will I stop you from proceeding? And it will take precious time? Yes, I will. So at the end of every module, if you, you can, must complete a learning assessment, I'm gonna find out through your, it's called module evaluation here, but it's the learning assessment. You scored a six as your highest score. 
we're going to have a meeting. We're going to have an intervention. That's unacceptable. Something's wrong. We've got to figure that out. Is it a seven? Maybe I just send you some notes, some things to do, uh, maybe a warning. Now, I will tell you, I am harder on three and four because you need that foundation. So you may get an eight and I want an intervention on, on the first two modules just because so much there is so critical. But if generally, if you score an eight, nine or 10, I'm gonna reveal the next module for you. Um, not necessarily without some comment, but I'm gonna, you're gonna be able to move on. Now, let me introduce you at the last here to my favorite economist, Thomas Sowell. And he writes in Basic Economics that the principles are not complicated. And this is true. They're, they're difficult the first time you see them, but as you start to think about them and you begin to conceptualize them, they're not really tough. Oh, uh, Toughness and complication comes in when the political rhetoric and the economic jargon are used in order to make these events murky. So basic economic principles are not unknown to most of the public and the media. So with that, I wish you a great success this summer.